Hello everyone, Captain Horn 23 here, and today I'm going to show you how to optimize Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 for your computer and to get the most performance out of your PC when running this game. So let's get right into it. Before we begin guys, if you'd like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know whenever I upload new content. Also, if you're looking for people to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, including myself, feel free to join my Discord where you can find me. The link will be in the description. Alright guys, so the first thing we want to do is disable our game mode. So this is really easy, it's not gonna, none of this is gonna mess with your computer at all. So what you want to do is hit the Windows key and S, or you could simply come down here and, um, well, uh, I don't know, I don't have a search bar, so I, I use Windows key and S. Anyway, pull up your search bar and simply type in game mode, and we see game mode settings here. Click on that, and you want to turn this off. This is going to optimize the game. Next, what you want to do is come up here to the game bar, right here, and make sure that is also off. For some reason, this just dips the frame rates. I don't know why. After you turn the game bar off, you want to go down to Captures, which is right below it. And you want to make sure this background recording is off, which I'm pretty sure by default it is. And the recorded audio. Turn that off, just like that. All right. So going over that again, make sure your game mode is off. Make sure your game bar is off. Make sure your background recording is off and your recorded audio is off. And that is all we have to do there. All right. Next, what we have to do is go back down to the search bar, type in GPU, and that's going to pull up the graphics settings. That's what we want here. All right. Once you're here, you want to select this drop down menu and click on Universal App, the other, only other option. And then we simply want to select an app. And then find Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's probably going to be right here in the M's, obviously. And then hit Add. All right. And after that, what we want to do is click Options and then High Performance. Okay. And then hit Save. There you go. That is all we have to do there. Next, if you don't already get GeForce Experience, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're running NVIDIA drivers, then I'm happy to say that NVIDIA has recently released a driver update for all NVIDIA GPUs that optimize for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if I go to my GeForce Experience here and then click on Drivers, we see that we have Microsoft Flight Simulator game ready drivers and then just hit download which is something I still have to do I'm not going to do that right now but if you don't already have this get it because it's only going to help you and after you get those drivers you're done with GeForce Experience alright next what we have to do is go into Steam this will only work if you know where your .exe it runs from and if you're in Steam it's really easy all you have to do is go find Microsoft Flight Simulator, right click on it, hit Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files. This is what you're looking for if you don't have it through Steam. It's most likely going to be on one of your drives. Alright? And you want to scroll down to you find Microsoft Flight Simulator.exe right here. And after you find it, right click on it, go all the way down to Properties, and then you go to Compatibility, the tab right beside General. Alright? And then you want to disable full screen optimization. Disable that. All right. After you do that, you want to click the change high DPI settings, just like this. After that, you want to check this box right here that says override high DPI scaling behavior, just like that. Hit OK, hit apply, hit OK, and exit out. And that is all you have to do, guys, for to get your PC ready for optimizing this wonderful game. Next, let's head in and go over some of the graphical settings inside. Right, we are of now in the game. game and once you're on the main screen, go ahead and head over to options, which is the far tab on the right here. Go to a general and it'll pop up with your graphical settings. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, this is a lot of trial and error. I mean, every computer is different, so you're just going to have to go in and test some things for yourself. 
but I will try my best to explain the differences in a lot of these and what are frame killers and what aren't. So starting with display mode, you want this to be full screen. I mean, who doesn't? It's going to look crap if you have it windowed. Full screen resolution, I'm running at 2K, but um, lower end PCs would not have a chance at doing that. So um, I recommend leaving your resolution whatever it default is because that's going to look the best. But if your frames are really suffering, then you might want to tick this down a little bit. But your, your game might end up looking like crap. Alright, HDR10 uh, is grayed, grayed out, I can't change it. Global rendering quality, this is just presets, I'm just going to leave it custom for now. V-Sync, I recommend turning it off for those of you who have really powerful computers, like myself. I have a decently powerful computer, and you, we will be able to hit over 60 frames per second in some cases. If this is on, it limits you to 60. You can't go higher. Alright, get rid of that. Alright, your render scaling. Now, this is going to demolish your frames if you put it up here to 200. I mean, just <laughs> even if you have a NASA computer, I don't think it could run 200. It's ridiculous. All this does is it changes the render quality and the scaling of everything. And anything above 100 is a no-go. I mean, I've even tried 110 and it just chugs my frames down. Um, I recommend not going below like 90 though or 80 because the game will start to again look like total crap but this is a massive frame killer guys um, if you go above 100 so 100 is the maximum unless you have like 2080 Ti's SLI or something anti-aliasing for us X playing 11 players we will know that anti-aliasing is an absolute frame killer now in this game I don't think it affects it as much as X Plane 11. So, this is just one of those things you're going to have to tinker around with. You have four options. You can either turn anti aliasing off, you can turn the first option, which is FXAA, and we see over here it provides lower quality anti aliasing but does not require large amounts of computing power. So, those of you with kind of lower end PCs, this might be your best option. And if you are still suffering in the frames, you might want to just turn it off totally. DLAA is a good middle ground, so we see it provides minimum medium quality anti-aliasing, but it requires a little more computing power. And the last one is TAA, and it provides the highest quality at the highest cost. So TAA is for those people with some pretty darn powerful computers. So I'm going to leave mine on TAA for now because my computer is decently powerful. My specs are in the description if you're curious of what I have. Um, but that'll do it for anti-aliasing. By the way, anti-aliasing smooths out the lines and does not cause jagged lines anymore, so they'll be straight, like your taxiway markings and edges of buildings, stuff like that. Terrain level of detail. Um, this is one of those you're just going to have to play around with. You know, some people may be able to run 200, others might have to go way down here to like 50. But um, I like to keep mine on like 140. I guess I'll try 150. Train vector data, we have four options here. We have ultra, off, low, medium, or high. So that's five options, but you get it. Now, um, this affects oceans, lakes, rivers, and roads. So of course, if you're flying over an ocean or a few rivers, and you're on a lower MPC, you probably don't want to have this on ultra because your frame rates will start to chug down. Now, um, this is another one where you just kind of have to play with it and find the best option for your specific computer, but I leave mine on Ultra. Buildings, now this is going to be a frame killer if you fly over New York City, or London, or Miami, Los Angeles, do you get the point? Any Anywhere with a lot of buildings, Chicago, any of them, it's going to drag your frames down to the ground. So, um, this is very much related to the train vector data. Um, put it on ultra if you think you can handle it. If not, you can turn it down. Honestly, I don't think there's that much of a difference between high and ultra, but I leave mine on ultra just because, and I might change that down in the future. Trees, um, this can, I don't think it has that big of an effect on your actual performance, but again, it's similar to the buildings. I don't think there's much of a difference between high and ultra, so I'm just going to leave mine. I'll put mine on high and we'll see how they look. Grashes and bushes, exact same way with the trees, you know, high or ultra. If you have lower NPC, you might could get away with medium, and um, if you have to, low. Alright, I'm going to leave mine on high. Objects level of detail. Now, to my knowledge, this one is 
a pretty large frame hit. So running it at 200, it might starve your PC for per performance. Um, if you have lower end PCs, I would drop into the 70s. Um, you might be able to get away with like maybe even 100, depending on your PC again. But um, I like to leave mine kind of near the train level of detail. So the objects level of detail, I'll make it 140. Volumetric clouds, this is going to depend on some things such as the real-time weather. If you're using live weather and you're flying into an area with a crap ton of clouds or a thunderstorm or something like that, having them on ultra might not be the best decision. Now again, there's not too much of a difference between high and ultra, but ultra just looks phenomenal and I leave mine there. But um, and medium, um, I'm sorry, low, just they look like garbage. They just look like cotton balls, you know, no edges, just round. So if you're on a low end PC, I recommend trying to push for high because clouds are a very important aspect to a flight simulator. But um, for us higher end people, we can leave it on ultra. Texture resolution, this is going to depend on your PC again, um, pretty heavily. So ultra is for us guys with pretty powerful computers. Um, lower end and medium end, you can maybe get away with high, but um, you, you just have to play around with it and test out low and medium. So we're trying to get a balance here between you know high FPS and a good looking simulator here. So that's what I'm trying to help you guys out with. So um, I would never recommend going everything low because the game's just gonna look totally crap. And I think the majority of computers today can push out some more FPS. Not to mention Osobo and Microsoft has tried to optimize this game as best as possible and hopefully even more in the future. So this is just one of those things that you need to test out. I'm gonna leave mine on Ultra. Anistropic filtering. Um, I honestly don't know what this is, but I do know you can go to times 16, times 8, times 4, times 2. This you're just going to have to play around with. I'm going to put mine on times 16 because I do have a higher end computer. If you are on a lower end, you can try 4, maybe even get away with 8. That's where I had mine at and there was no issue there. Texture super sampling. Um, do not turn this on. This is another frame rate destroyer. I leave mine off. Texture synthesis. Um, this is going, uh, I don't even know really what this does, but it's the same idea, you know, play around with it. Um, lower end people might try lower medium, higher end might, is higher ultra. So I'm just going to leave mine on high. Water waves, this is personal preference, honestly, I mean, this really isn't going to affect your performance much at all. But if you're flying around like St. Martin or anywhere with beaches, you probably do want to have this on high. But you'll just have to test it out and fly around an area like that. Shadow maps, um, this has to do with shadows which are known for killing frames, but I honestly have not had an issue with shadows yet in this game. So um, you can go to 2048 or all the way down to 768. This is going to be your low end PC guys. Um, the medium end you might be able to get away with 1024, 1536 and the really high end guys we can get away with 2048 which is a very fun game to play on the phone. Anyway, I'm going to leave mine on 2048. Train Shadows. I recommend leaving these off because as far as I know, this is definitely an FPS killer. So, and it, it's, um, it outweighs how good it looks. So, it's not, if I have this all the way up, I'm not going to notice that much of a difference graphical wise. Now, I will notice a difference frame rate wise, so I just leave it off. Context Shadows. Um, you can adjust these to however you like. Mine were on low and I didn't really notice anything. I'm going to try on ultra though. Windshield effects, personal preference. Um, this might chug your frames, might not, depending on your PC. Lower end guys, stick with medium. Um, you might be able to get away with ultra, depending on um, your performance. Ambient occlusion, uh, this, I, I have it on low, but um, I'm going to actually try it on ultra. This is um, one of those things that purely depends on your computer specs and if you have higher end graphics cards and processors high amounts of RAM too for the ambient occlusion you'll need uh, you you could squeeze ultra and high if it really affects your frames reflections um, I recommend keeping these on low because um, this is another FPS killer that outweighs the graphical um, experience so I, I leave mine on low 
light shafts this doesn't really affect performance so um, I'm gonna leave mine on ultra but for the lower end guys you know test it out try low medium bloom um, this doesn't have any graphical performance effect so uh, turn it on if you don't like it or it does kind of hit, have a hit on your performance turn it off depth of field um, personal preference but um, it says it may affect performance and it might but probably not that much at all lower end guys you can probably get away with high maybe even ultra but um it it like i said it's personal preference you know if you don't like depth of field then sure you don't have to leave it on at all but um so yeah moving on lens correction i have that off you can turn it on if you want not going to have any performance on the impact um impact on the performance that was weird lens flare um i leave it on uh it shouldn't affect your performance but it looks really freaking good and i love the lens flare so try if you can leave that on and these last two are just some generic plane model stuff all right guys so that i just went over all the graphical settings and hopefully gave you a good idea of what you need to set and again you can play around with these as you please um one thing i am going to mention is tab out and see what processes you actually have running because I'm going to tell you right now if you have a lot of tabs running and open on Google Chrome your performance is going to take a massive hit trust me I've learned that from experience I was getting so many stutters and just running at like 20 FPS now I was honestly getting mad until I turned off or um, X out all my Google Chrome tabs and it improved another thing that I'm going to mention to you guys that's very important Go down to this traffic tab which is under sound here now you want to turn off um ai traffic and you want to lower this airport vehicle density this is an fps killer at the bigger airports like charlotte lax chicago new york jfk all that miami these will kill your frame rates um and honestly i could even get away with lowering it a little more even though i have a decently powerful computer ground aircraft density is the same way it's going to be a killer at those major airports so toy around with these but i'm going to tell you if you max all these out at 100 then you better get ready for a show with your um or rather you better get ready for a slideshow with your simulator so i try to keep these low as possible and you might just turn these off altogether if you don't like any ai traffic um, boats, road vehicle, vehicles, and ship ferries, they don't really kill the frames, but um, I don't think you should run them at 100, maybe 75. Uh, you can get away with more if you do have a really high-end computer. But lower guys, you might want to try down to like 25, or maybe even zero. But um, it's just one of those things you got to test. Alright, and that'll do it guys. So um, after you're done, be sure to hit this apply and save down here, and it'll apply the graphical settings. And I'm going to go into the game and my specs are in the description let's see how good my game right, so runs we're now in the game and as you can, guys can tell wow i am stunned at the um amount of performance i am currently getting right now i mean you can just tell how smooth this is and wow it looks very good now um one thing is when you spawn in it's probably gonna lag because everything's got to load in but um after a while it will smooth out and like we can see right here now it looks really good and this is without the graphical drivers I still need to get that myself and the outside view is very 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 smooth wow look at those clouds too this is what I'm talking about um, my clouds I believe they're on ultra so let's actually I'm gonna fly around a little bit with the drone camera let's see here there we go and so I'm at Charlotte International Airport, which is a decently sized airport. It's not as big as LAX or Chicago or anything, but this is 100% a lot better frame rates than I was getting. Um, and I can fly over to the city where there is a good amount of buildings over here. And um, uh, one other thing, the trees, I believe mine are set on... Uh, what was it? High, I think. Let's see what the difference is if I do apply those graphical settings uh, to the trees. So, yes, they are on high. I'm going to turn both these on ultra. And the volumetric clouds are on ultra. I'm going to show you what it looks like if you have them on low. Or um, rather, yes, so low is the lowest they can go. All right. 
um, apply and save. Now I'm going to show you how crappy the clouds look. Um, okay, these don't look that bad, but I mean, you, you, can, you can kind of tell what I mean. It's almost like they're out of focus. There's no edges, really, and there's some stutters right there. But um, it's just because things are starting to load in. There we go, now it's all smoothed out. Um, yeah, so on the trees, you can tell, I mean, <laughs> they don't look much different at all. So, and it didn't appear to affect my performance. And if we turn those all the way low, I'm going to crank the clouds back up. Just like that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not that much of a difference <laughs> at all. I mean, what the heck? There's literally not that much difference at all with the trees between um, low and ultra. I mean, so you guys on lower end PCs can 100% get away with this, and even medium end. Um, now, the one thing I do tell is the closer I get, the... Um, the more they come into view, so that might bu bug some of you guys. But now the clouds are on ultra, so you can see how good they look and how well it's performing on my computer thus far. And here's some road traffic. So mine were set to like 75, and there's a good amount, and it's not really affecting my FPS too much. And now the buildings, I think I had them on ultra, and they sure do look ultra because, man, do these buildings look really good. I mean, look at that detail. Even got the little air condition unit up here. Um, but yeah, I'm actually not getting that much of a hit here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, um, I'm going to show you the frame rate killer. If, um, if I turn on render scaling, watch this. If I crank this thing up to 200, it's not going to affect how good the simulation actually looks, but check out these frame rates. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible. I mean, it's honestly not as bad as I expected, but that's 100%, like 15 frames maybe. And it doesn't make it look that much better. So this is one of those things where we did not get a balance here. The game looks phenomenal, but my FPS is suffering. Now, if I crank that all the way down, I'm going to show you how crappy it looks. So it's going down to 30. We're going to apply it. And then just, yeah, I mean, you can tell. I mean, my frames are... A billion times better but everything looks super blurry right now so that's not gonna suffice now um, maybe at 80 like you lower end people might be able to get away with 80 yeah like see I mean this still looks very very good but um, it's uh, and it's gonna give you a lot more performance out of your computer now with my specs, I might be able to. I've never, I hadn't tried going above 100. Look, I wonder if 110 destroys FPS. I don't know. It, it's actually running decently well. But yeah, okay, I can tell there's some stutters here and there. So this is what I'm talking about. You see, this is exactly what I'm doing. Is uh, or what I told you to do is exactly what I'm doing. Just go in here and screw around with it, um, and just try to find settings that match you. You know, fly around with the drone camera. And you can see after I turned off anti-aliasing, you see those like flickering? That's what anti-aliasing does. It'll prevent, you see all those flickers in the top of the screen? It does not look good at all. And now if I crank anti-aliasing all the way back up, just like that, now those flickerings are virtually non-existent. And I did not get too much of an impact on my frame, so I will keep them there. So that's what I do. I just play around with my settings and try to find some good ones and fly around with the drone camera. If you guys don't know, insert is the default key binding, and you can control it with W, A, S, and D, and your numpad. Um, feel free to remap those, though, if you don't have a numpad. So, yes, that is how you get your performance set to the way you like it in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. My specs are listed below, so you can kind of use this as a baseline and just hop in the game and start messing around with stuff, guys. That's really all you can do. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to join the Discord if you haven't already. Please do like and subscribe if you want some more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 content. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you get your simulator running beautifully. And I will see you guys on the next video.